Every time I bring people here, I always call out to my ancestors and let them know that I am bring other people here and welcome them to the land. Long time ago, they lived my tribe. Marawala, they called the people of Goose Creek. This land here, this is my grandfather, my father country. I was born then. I got to know my family and they told me a story about this country. They live a spider woman and a freshwater catfish. And those two communicating, talking, how the land was really special to them. And you know, they said, we want to look after the land. So when we are gone, the next family of generation will come along and take care of this land. The Tiwi College project was an initiative through Guy Reynolds and Matthew Hayden in consultation with the Land Council to set up something here at Picataramore to give the kids a bit of diversity and to try and grow as much produce as we can, um, which is fresh and cheaper than getting it in from Darwin. It's morphed into something much greater than that. The garden in itself is sort of a metaphor for how kids grow. So now we're able to get the kids involved on, on a range of different levels through these work scholarship programs. So there is now a junior guide program that's been adopted, um, which gives the kids to try something different and, and go to an actual business and mingle with visitors that come onto their land. And that's quite a special fit. I first heard about the Tiwi Garden Project from Guy Reynolds and he invited me up what he really wanted to do was um, have me and Andrew Fuller give them a nice little uh, foundation in what fly fishing's all about. We came up here, had incredible fishing straight off the bat. Uh, the blue water was amazing. We got onto some huge bait balls that just had tuna and mackerel smashing them. Plenty of Saratoga, of course, plenty of barras as well. But the coolest part of the trip was putting the fly rod in Anthony's hand. I asked him, have you even seen fly fishing on TV? And he said no. So he was really coming in at ground zero. Within 20 minutes, he was throwing really nice loops. And 10 minutes after that, he had his first fish. You just know that this kid's a fishy dude. All I could really think about was how much Shannon Kitchener would love to come up here. Um, and I thought he could fill like a, a really nice mentoring role here. As soon as we were lucky enough to be invited back, he was the first guy I rang up. Jacob Parmigiani uh, stuck his hand up and I thought he was a really good fit. He's an artist and I thought him and Shannon would make quite a, an interesting team. And we flew into Millicarpity on the island. The boys were foaming to go fishing, but both being artists, they uh, insisted on going to the gallery first. Once we arrived uh, in the local community, we went straight to the art centre. I was lucky enough to meet Pedro. He was saying that he was a traditional owner of Andrew Nangu Creek, which is Goose Creek. And he was telling me about the American fly fishermen that his father had taken there back in the 80s. And straight up, I said, Lefty Cray. And he said, yes, that, that, that's a man. An instant connection, and I had to invite him fly fishing. And as soon as I mentioned it to him, he jumped at it. Hey, let him sink. Strip in now. He actually told me later that he knew one day someone would come and take him fly fishing exactly like his dad did with Lefty Cray <laughs> and Rod Harrison. To get him out on the water well done, brother. and yeah. to <laughs> teach him how to cast and to catch his first toga was one of the most special things that I'll, I'll have forever. I'm going to go to the TV college. 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 I'm going
Barramundi is a special fish, iconic Australian sport fish. If you're fishing in northern Australia, you want to catch a barramundi. You know, let's face it, up here they're the king. That's the one everybody wants. Insane. Once, once you get that hook set, it's on like Donkey Kong, they're jumping and yeah, it's great fun. And you're just waiting for that big head to come out, that angry, pissed off head shake as they come out of the water. And you'll see these bronze swamp barramundi come out and just flash on your fly. It's that visual aspect that I guess everyone gets a excitement out of. Well, they're implosion feeders, so getting them on poppers is pretty intense. An almighty implosion just comes up and sucks that fly down. Good one. <clears throat> Way better fish. I've come up the jump. They just hover under that fly for just a split second, and then just a big explosion and boom, down she goes. Yes, ah. nice fish. Hit like a freight train. Sorry. Thing just came out and smoked it. They're not an easy fish to catch. You have to know the habits. You have to know the tides to fish them. You have to know the characteristics. You have to know that they're a schooling fish. And that was a cool thing to watch Jacob come up for the first time and catch his first barra. Oh, come on. A lot of times spent in the trees and a lot of times caught up. To, to get that accuracy with the bigger flies um, on the bigger rods, definitely a challenge for me. Oh, go, 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 go. You got the root of the fucking tree. Roll him, just nah, just roll him and just try and get him off. You know, having Shan mentor me to be able to get myself in the right spot and give me a bit of stick in regards to getting it in the wrong spot. Deep, straight oh, through Oh yeah, it. little See? fella yep. in there. Punch it straight in. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you do, punch so it straight in. I can't, I can't get in there though, being a lefty man. Like, that was on his tail, but. Yeah, they don't eat from their tail. No, nah, not normally. That's where you want to be, that's where they are, man. Nice, nice. Pull him, yeah, pull him the other way. Down, low. That's it, well done. So biggest toga, biggest barra. Biggest tree. <laughs> well done, brother. Beautiful. First barramundi on fly, Goose Creek. Happy days. Goose Creek is one of those magic fisheries that has a great population of wild, untouched barramundi. There's no commercial fishing or anything like that. So you're going to an area that is pretty much untouched. Then you've got the Saratoga that is a, a very special fish for me. There's only a couple of species that we have and they're iconic to Australia. Any chance to chase those fish, I'll jump at the opportunity to. Shan tied on this giant yellow popper and he was just standing up the front of the boat, stripping it in as fast as he could. And uh, these toga were just flying out from, from the lily pads and absolutely murdering that fly. But they just kept coming, fish after fish, and we just couldn't get Shan off the front of the boat. I mean, he was like a little kid in a candy store. Casting it out and actually double hand stripping this fly as fast as I could move it. And these toga was just bow waving behind it and crashing this fly. It's something that I've never ever seen toga do on a fly. It is one of the best spots that I have been to for Saratoga and Barramundi together as a whole. And for it to be untouched and it will remain untouched because what the people are doing to protect it, I can't wait for the next time I go fish it.
Probably the most amazing part of the whole trip has been being involved and immersed in the Tiwi culture and also to some extent sharing our culture which is fly fishing with them. So it's felt like a real two-way street. Bringing these young kids and teaching them to be a guide in their own community and to show the visitors, the tourists, what the Tiwis have to offer is far greater having an Indigenous person doing that. And that's the foundation. I, I can't wait to see what happens in the next few years because what they've already started is, is absolutely amazing. Myself, I've been here now for almost 10 years um, and the change has been astronomical. Initially, when I was here, there was between 20 and 30 kids showing up and not really enjoying it. And now, sort of eight to 10 years later, there's between 80 and 100 kids with over 80% attendance, which is fantastic. So something's working. Helping these young men and women and empowering them to find a vocation that they can do for the rest of their lives, but something that they're really good at and something that they're really passionate about as well. And there's something very long-term and sustainable about that approach. Every Australian should be really proud of, of what's happening here and every Australian should support it in whatever way they can. What, you got Superman undies on? Yeah. Don't you wear Superman undies? Huh? I don't wear undies. Uh, uh, or, or ask Pedro what he thinks about fly Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I will have a good, good answers for that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs>